Thank you, Catherine, and um, thanks for all the interesting presentations. And um, when I was listening, I was thinking, well, there are many really de defining elements of, of makes what makes the global AIDS movement so unique, um, the movement of which all of you here at the conference are, are a part of. And one of those elements is that it brings together completely different sectors in a way probably that, that other causes don't do in the same way. And um, I think, Helen, you said that, um, you know, we may not all be natural partners. And I think that's true. If you think of that, here on the panel you had, um, have representatives of a multi-billion dollar all company that um, helps implementing programs in Papua New Guinea and, and uh, you have representatives of um, community-based organizations in, in Zambia and you have researchers. And I think if it was not for this common cause, you know, how do we address the AIDS epidemic? We would never, you know, sit together at a table or work together towards a common cause. And I think um, that's why the, the title of this session, uh, Bridging Session, is quite appropriate, because it is about bridging also some divides. You know, how can we learn to work together? And I think that a lot of that has been achieved. Because um, if you think of that, what, what this movement has achieved over the last 10, 20 years, it is quite remarkable. And we've celebrated some of that at um, this conference. We've seen how, you know, access to prevention, care and treatment has increased, how infection rates and, and mortality has declined. And we now have this vision of ending the AIDS epidemic by the year 2030. But what needs to happen to really get to this goal? And I think there are very important lessons for that in this session. If we really want to get to the end of AIDS, we do need, for example, science both science into new tools, for example, new drugs, but also operational uh, research, as we've heard. How do you make the kind of tools that are available, you know, more accessible? How do we, for example, facilitate um, that, that people really access testing and then treatment in a way that, that we, we achieve the maximum impact? So that's a very important role that, that science provides, and, and we've heard example about that. We need, by the way, also funding so that these tools become accessible for all the people in need. But very importantly then, even if we have the tools and if we have the funding for that, it needs to be implemented well. And that's where the example of all search is coming in. You're, you're a partner in, in helping to, to implement these programs, which are often very complex. It's not easy to translate all of that into actual services. And in Papua New Guinea, it proved to be quite difficult for the Global Fund uh, to find the right partners. Um, we've been working with, with the government, in this case, the Ministry of Health. We've been working with civil society. Um, but now increasingly we, with all search, and we do that also in a number of other countries where the private sector offers opportunities, offers experience that they have in implementation that they make now available for these programs. And, and you gave some, some very compelling examples for that. Um, but we also need to work with, you know, the, the communities on the ground, which is, you know, one of the most important elements of that. And clearly, if you've been listening to all the presentations um, at this conference, including um, by our executive director, Mark Dabel, this morning in the, in the plenary, for, for the future, if we really want to kind of go the last mile and make sure that all people have access to prevention, care and treatment, then we need more than, than drugs and commodities and funding. Um, we need to overcome the very important drivers of the epidemic, which is stigma and discrimination, which is the marginalization of, of key affected populations, which is gender inequality. And we will never be able to achieve that without true community involvement. That is what's happening at the community level. And we, whether it's, you know, corporations, whether it's academics, whether it's an international organization like the Global Fund, we are just there, I would say, to facilitate that, to enable, to empower communities so that the conditions are right, that, that people can then access the kind of life-saving services that we need so that we can really 
uh, achieve that goal of, of ending AIDS. And um, so for me, that has been the significance of all these, these presentations, that we you know, need to bring all these elements together. And with that, I think we can achieve these noble goals. Thank you. Thank you, Christoph. Kenley? Uh, thank, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity for, uh, to, to reflect on what has been said. I think the, um, the best picture of where we are with research in Africa was probably you know, best presented by David. Um, and in the sense that he was the first speaker, uh, probably gave a picture of perhaps a dichotomy between research in Africa and research in the North, well, maybe research in the South, uh, primarily in Africa and research in the North, that the communities, especially in HIV research, woke up to the realities of what needs to be done and how community engagement needs to, uh, to operate uh, a, in as far back as 1999. Um, and yet, Africa, with the organization with which I work, is only waking up to that reality in 2000, or woke up to that reality in 2011. And so if you look at that gap, and what it means, and how it, it translates in terms of technical capacities, technical or, or abilities to probably uh, engage at the same levels, it probably gives you a very clear picture of the sort of uh, challenges that we are facing as communities in Africa to meaningfully engage in research. Having said that, um, what has also been a learning curve, or fast learning curve for us, is that the the attitudes as well towards the capacities and, and therefore uh, 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 mean a willingness by research to really engage with these African communities is, 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 has been, oh, you know, people have taken advantage of it perhaps to some degree if I was to be blunt, in that they, we have lifted the, the models of research in Europe and, and America or North America and brought them into Africa. And in that sense, if you speak of a, a CAB, a community advisory board in, in North America, in, in any part of North America, in any part of Europe, and actually engage those communities, the chances are that their literacy levels will be much better, or much higher, and are best likely to, uh, or are also likely to understand what the protocol is intended to do. If you lift that and bring it into Africa, into Zambia, chances are that the literacy levels would probably limit the ability for our communities to fully understand what those, uh, you know, what, what those research is trying to achieve. And I'll give you a very typical example in that, you know, if you remember the microbicide study in Zambia several years ago, uh, which went all sour where communities had no idea what it was intended to do and, you know, concluded that, in fact, the study was intended to infect them with HIV when, you know, some of the women got, you know, it got infected during the, the trial. So we need to have a much better approach to the way we work with our communities in you know, resource-limited communities. And I, in this respect, I was happy that you know, Helen was on this panel because in our approach to the way that um, uh, in moving forward, if you like, with the way we work with communities in the South, that we're gonna have to work very different that our community advisory boards we, you know, need to be probably defined differently. And if we can't define them differently, uh, then at least engage with a much wider stakeholder community group. And this is what we have tried to do with the COPO Patsari, <coughs> which you referred to as, you know, as a community uh, partnership platform. That outside that community advisory board within this study, we felt that in, to, in order for the communities to own the study or the research or the research outcomes, that if the, you know, the, the immediate arm, the, 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 uh, uh, the testing and so on was to be sustained, uh, that these communities need to actually own these studies by engaging at a much wider community, community level and at a community level that was outside the research, you know, uh, 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 the research sites. And so it's a learning curve and, and, and I'm glad you're saying it's a dynamic partnership uh, 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 discussion because each study will have to determine what those kind of platforms need to look like in order to really meaningfully engage in the, you know, in the research um, uh, or trials that are being carried out. And lastly, um, the, one of the challenges, of course, uh, of course, the platform is not working as well as it could, partly because it's not funded directly uh, or, you know, by, the, by the research. 
and that obviously Helen in designing her study uh, you know, with her colleagues may not have thought about this component and therefore is, there is no real direct funding. And this is where the oil search uh, component might become important in an element like that, that you know, there would be a public partnership, public private partnership or NGO partnership a component with it that study which could provide additional funding to really strengthen that community engagement. So there would be independent monitoring, there would be independent uh, you know, discussions within the communities about what the whole study is in, you know, intended to achieve. And I will also need to maybe end by saying that as, as we're moving to more clinical trials, you know, phase two and phase three trials being done in Africa for PrEP and so on, and you know, reduced dosing, it's going to be very important to really be able to and, you know, carry our communities with us so they fully are able to understand what we mean, uh, when, you know, what we're trying to achieve with our studies. And also understand that communities mean different things for different contexts. And it is important that you know, th this multi-stakeholder uh, engagement is, 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 you know, is undertaken to, you know, to, to, to ensure that we define those communities uh, that are meaningful for what we are trying to achieve. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ken Lee. And Sean, thank you. Thanks very much. Uh, just to build on the other panelists, and thanks for the opportunity to comment. Uh, so what does a neuropsychologist have to say about partnerships, you'd ask? <laughs> That's crazy. Um, uh, so, so let me tell you, uh, I have sort of two or three comments. And the one that I'll start with, though, is just to think about the audience and these partnerships. You're hearing different approaches to these, what they are, and uh, it, it's really easy as an academic, a professor, a clinician, to think about, you know, let me just tell you about what, what, that, what that is and how you do it. And, and I think it's, it's really helpful to think about that because the what and the how are not as important as the why. And um, there's this book, uh, Simon Sinek, he's a business leader in the, in the U.S., uh, wrote a book called Why, um, formed these three things called the Golden Triangle, um, but it really gets at the centerpiece. If you think about it, it's not what you do or how you do it. We're so used to telling you about these things, but why we do it. And I think David's presentation about the three-legged race, about, you know, that dynamicness about, you know, how you're working together in those 15 people running together, trying to think about how, what you need to do uh, and how you're going to do it. Um, but it's really where you're going and why it's important. And for us at the, at the OHTN in Ontario, it really is about people living with HIV being the center of, of what we do. And so, um, and if you have that, and you have that sort of approach that I'm not there as an academic to, you know, build my career, I'm there to help serve the people living with HIV in the province. And so, you know, the hat that I wear as the director of the OHTN, if you think of, if, if you have that sort of approach, it changes the way you look at the problems and the things that you do. Um, I've been at the OHTN now 10 years, and, and um, my VPs at the, at the hospital at the university said, Sean, this is the worst thing for your career. You know, you're an associate professor, and uh, you're doing well. Why would you want to go to an agency and start developing partnerships and trying to work on the ground with communities and uh, do these sort of things. And they said, you know, you're going to become an administrator. And I said, well, you know, okay. So I went to the next person, went to my VP at the university in the hospital, the next person, and uh, was kept on getting this, this feedback as an academic. And I said, well, I don't think uh, this is one of those situations where perhaps no means yes. And uh, I chose to do that, but I think along the way, and I was fortunate to come into the province, or be in the province, but come into this world when... We had incredible community leaders that understood the value of research, understood that science was going to take us to places. As David said, you know, treatments were coming online. We were doing advances. We wanted to build the best and the brightest and have them available to uh, really help us shape where we needed to go. Um, and, and it's easy to do that. It's easy to build programs of research and, fun, and as a funder to do that. But we were very intentional about the centerpiece of why we're there very intentional about the connectedness of the, of the people, of the relationships, of the, uh, of the commitment, uh, first and foremost, to people living with that and at risk for HIV. And if you do that, it changes the way you think, and it changes the way you do things. And as a result, I think we've been very successful, and we still have a lot to learn and a lot to do, um, but, it, but it really reframes how you, I think, um, uh, start to think about the, not just the problems, but the solutions. So, so, so my comments really are about you know, for you in the audience, as we get into this discussion, it's easy for us to sort of lay out, here's what we did. 
Um, but I think at the end of the day, it's, to, it's that connectedness. It's not the cerebral part of it, coming back to being a neuropsychologist. It's, it's what matters in here. And, uh, and, if you, and if you have that, if you're there to serve, it, it just changes the dynamicness of, of your response or the response, I think, that you're a part of. So those are my comments. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. And, and finally, Ross Hutton. Thanks, Catherine. Yeah. One of the disadvantages of going last is that most of it's already been said by now. <laughs> but um, coming f the common theme coming through, everyone's been talking about communities. And I think that's something that uh, Oil Search, um, our parent company, in, in being an oil and gas uh, uh, company in a place like Papua New Guinea, where with only just over, under 8 million people, we've got 800 languages. And so every time you engage with um, a community, it's a whole new uh, renegotiation of a, of a new partnership. And uh, certainly from the company side, you know, we wouldn't be able to conduct the business of, of oil and gas operations unless we had these intimate partnerships with the communities. Um, most of the land in public is customary land, so I mean, th these are all necessary negotiations. And certainly from the Health Foundation side now that we, we understand this and then we, when we were doing our um, work, you know, it's all about community engagement and partnerships with the community and community ownership. Um, you know, no matter what great um, national strategies we might have um, that have come out of... Uh, uh, from the national level, unless we do get those partnerships with the communities right, um, then we're not able to be as effective. Um, probably the other um, common, uh, or sorry, the other theme that I'd uh, just like to push forward is the um, getting engaged with the private sector. And, and, and so much in this type of forum, you know, when we think private sector, it's usually about big pharma or it's about biotech, et cetera, but um, oil and gas companies don't necessarily come to mind. And I was pleased to see that one of the sessions yesterday with uh, some of our colleagues in the extractive industry session um, from... Uh, um, BHP Billiton and Anglo-American and, um, and Newcrest Mining the, about the great work that they're doing. So um, often you've got companies um, who do have a, a, a corporate social responsibility or a sustainability policy and, and they do want to be involved. But, uh, you know, these guys are run by, these companies are run by engineers and uh, geologists and, uh, you know, they're not used to engaging in health. They're not used to participating in forums such as this. So I would say to, to the, um, the HIV community, um, part of the response is reach out to those companies because often they do want to be engaged, but they don't know how. They don't know how to take those first steps. So do reach out to them. Um, when you go back, you know, there's people here from around the world, which is wonderful, but uh, when you do go back, engage with them. And also throwing out the challenge to other you know, private sector companies such as ours. Um, you know, you do have a responsibility and you do need to be engaged in the communities in which you operate. And uh, you can't, you know, just sit behind the fence or you can't sit um, behind, um, you know, uh, some some nice commercials that might come on TV. You know, get out there and get involved. Um, so that would be the challenge we throw out to the other uh, the other private sector partners. Thanks. Thank you, Ross. And I'd like to invite um, David, Helen, and um, Kevin to respond to these comments if if they wish before we open up to the floor for questions and comments. Any immediate responses to what you've just heard? I think the, the back on. I think the key thing is that the key theme has come about building those partnerships, and they're not easy all the way, all the time, and they do change as you've both talked about, and they change and fluctuate, and you've got to put an effort into it. It, it is much easier to work in a silo and go out and do your own thing and forget about everyone else, but that's certainly not the way to do it. The thing that's <clears throat> striking me most is I think that human relationships are now in a time in the history and the development of humanity one of our greatest challenges, relationships in and of themselves. And when we apply our hearts and our minds to a relationship which is an intimate act, <clears throat> that it is done with consciousness and in so doing whether it is a partnership towards an end a partnership towards healing or a partnership towards building community um, I think that the notion of partnership is something that takes time it takes listening, and that is deep listening. It's not to the obvious superficial. 
and it takes caring for one another. And that takes caring for what that person dreams of, not necessarily their function. And I think that that's been a theme that I've been thinking about as I've been listening to people. And when we are applying ourselves to an epidemic, uh, I think the thing that has propelled forward throughout this entire epidemic has been the realization of dreams and the ability to dream a different reality and then to work together. And I think it is really important for us to hold those dreams so that we can, in fact, uh, see beyond the finish line.